Payday 3 numbers are down. Month by month by month, they're bleeding out. Somehow the loyalists will try to defend this, saying that the reason for the low numbers are due to recent releases with players jumping to newer games. But that's bullshit. All the games that have released recently have been colossal disasters, suffering horrible ratings from both critics and players. Not to mention, it only takes a glance at Payday 2's player base in comparison to see that that's completely false. There's clearly no lack of Payday players who could jump into Payday 3 at any moment. It's that they choose not to. Why? Well, in order to understand what really went wrong, we first have to look back in time to how Payday 3 was created, and in order to tell you that tale, we will first have to time travel back to Payday 2. The year is 2013. Starbreeze is in a dire state after their problematic development of Syndicate for Electronic Arts and find themselves on the verge of bankruptcy. Their only hope to recovery is that their next game becomes an unrivaled success. It is their only parachute, everything or nothing. Payday 2 needed to succeed, and boy did it. Payday 2 launched on August 13, 2013 and was a monster hit, a lightning in a bottle. The game's extreme popularity caused it to sell extremely well along with every DLC it happened to receive. Starbreeze turned from a developer that was barely holding on to one that had so much money they didn't know what to do with them. That will become clear very shortly. In 2015, they invested $8 million into publishing Raid World War II, a game that looked more like a Payday 2 DLC than its own diverse thing. However, only 3 months into release, it had an average of 71 players a month. It's safe to say that the $8 million they invested was not returned. Also, in May of 2015, they would spend around $7.5 million on a game engine known as Valhalla, which turned out to be nothing more than a renderer, a nearly unusable software that was practically impossible to work with. In June 2015, they would spend another $2 million on a VR firm known as Infinity, then proceed to spend another $10 million to set up a virtual reality theme park in Dubai, then spend an additional 7.1 million euros on a company called Norzen to build a VR movie experience. Not to mention all the new offices that were opened in some of the most expensive possible locations, all the way from Los Angeles to Paris. While CEO Bo Anderson was spending money like a drunken sailor, Starbreeze were struggling big time. They were working on a game called Overkills The Walking Dead, but the problem is the engine they were forced to work on, Valhalla, the one that Bo Anderson spent over 7 million dollars on, was completely unusable. It made developing the game a constant nightmare, as the engine was simply not working as intended. And all the time that was being wasted on trying to get it functional was leaving them farther and farther behind in the pipeline. Not only were other game engines like Unreal taking massive steps forward while they were staggering, but also the release date was getting closer and closer while they were simply nowhere. Eventually, it was an obvious decision. Valhalla had to be replaced, and although switching to Epic was a good thing, it happened far too late, as now the two years of work they had done in Valhalla was basically erased, and they had to start from scratch with no time at all. All this time and money that was wasted over the years for nonsense, Yet, it's because of Payday 2 that they were able to be kept in business. Despite that, no one was intelligent enough to even think for a moment to start putting some money away for the development of Payday 3. Tell me, dear viewer, can you see the massive iceberg that is approaching in the background? With only a year and a half of development, Overkill's The Walking Dead hit the game store and the reception is about what you'd expect a complete and total disaster, as well as a financial flop. With the game failing to recover, let alone bring any revenue, the
the situation was once again on edge. Despite Payday 2's incredible success, the amount of money that was lost in Bo Anderson's delusions of grandeur was simply too much to ignore. He was promptly fired for his extreme incompetence, but the holes he left in the budget were too big to fill. This right here is our critical moment. Starbreeze had stopped development of Payday 2 in order to focus on The Walking Dead. But due to the extreme failure the game had turned into, it meant they had no choice but to go right back to their original cash cow. So, in 2019 the ultimate edition of the game is changed to Legacy Collection. Previously, anyone who bought the ultimate edition was to receive all future DLCs without further payment. Now, the ultimate edition is basically discontinued as any content coming in the future will be paid for separately. By doing so, Starbreeze hopes to be able to fund enough money down their pockets to get themselves back in a good position. It's 2019 and development of Payday 3 is barely being started. Meanwhile, Starbreeze have wasted all of their money on VR movie experiences, unusable game engines and games with monthly players you can count on one hand. Tell me viewer, are you starting to see the giant iceberg that's closing in on this already unstable ship? With their money drained from stupid investments, now in late 2019, Starbreeze has to juggle both brand new DLC for Payday 2 as well as early development for Payday 3. It doesn't take a genius to realize that splitting your attention in two vastly different directions isn't the best way to maximize either. But due to the stupidity of their previous overlord, they were left with no choice. The COVID pandemic certainly didn't help them in the matter, but a 50 million euro investment from Playon in 2021 did. The last Payday 2 DLC would be released in June 28, 2023, while Payday 3 would release on the 21st of September 2023, showcasing that Starbreeze was truly split down the middle working on both games at the same time. So, speaking of Payday 3's release, and we all know how that went, it still gave us our first look at the new game, allowed us to make comparisons and see the natural evolution that Starbreeze had decided to take. So, is that the problem? Is it that Payday 3's gameplay is actively worse than Payday 2? Not really. In many ways, Payday 3 fixes many, if not all, of the shortcomings of Payday 2, and there are many. As any Payday 2 player knows, the only way to move bodies is to have body bags. Without body bags, moving bodies is simply impossible, meaning you just have random guards, and sometimes sieves, just laying around waiting to get found. Meanwhile, in Payday 3, you can freely pick up any NPC's body on your shoulders and drop them any place you like. Also, everybody knows the clunky design of Payday 2's hostage maneuvering, where the only way to move them is to have them follow you, constantly getting themselves stuck on the environment, not listening to further commands, they follow your last known location, but often they will just lay on the ground before they even reach you, making moving hostages a total mess. Not to mention, you had a limited number of zip ties, meaning often you just have to shoot down most of them, as well as the clunky and unreliable way in which you intimidate hostages, making it so you can order them to go down multiple times and they will still try to run away. All of that is fixed in Payday 3, as now you can just grab them from behind and move them any place you like. You have an unlimited number of zip ties, meaning you have no need to shoot down hostages and most of the time the intimidation is very reliable, causing hostages to be more compliant. Not to mention in Payday 2, you can't even open or close doors, meaning there's never really a safe place to hide bodies or hostages, all fixed in Payday 3 where closing and opening doors is fully functional. Guard AI's is significantly improved as well, meaning you won't be getting spotted from behind every time you approach a guard, like you would often in Payday 2. These are just a small number of the improvements 
Payday 3 brings to the table is a significantly better experience over the ladder, with most heists being able to be done both in stealth and loud options. And the stealth is actually really good, unlike the Payday 2 stealth, which was basically a kill everyone challenge. In combination with the updated graphics, it's hard to see it as a hurdle. Yet, with all of these improvements, the question has to be asked once again, why is Payday 3 not able to acquire and hold an audience? Now, some people may put the blame on the catastrophic release, where the servers went down not just for a couple of hours, but multiple days, where the game was practically unplayable. And although that certainly was not the best way to start the Payday 3 experience, we've seen games bounce back from poor starts before. Payday 3 didn't. Some may blame the always online element, but again, that's only partially true. Though annoying for some players, it's not a fatal flaw, and if the game is really good, it's something most players will be willing to overlook. Plus, even with the removal of offline play, it still takes about a minute from selecting your heist to joining it in-game. Meanwhile, you can wait around for over 20 minutes in Payday 2 for CrimeNet to find you the heist you wish to play, unless you're willing to spend the extra money to just start it by yourself. No, the reality of Payday 3's missing player base has nothing to do with any of these problems, but a much bigger one, a problem so big it has infected the entirety of modern gaming, a problem that has been killing games and developers left and right, a problem that goes by two names, those names are Live Service. <laughs> Lackluster customization, created entirely to get you to pay for future cosmetic DLCs, ding 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 ding, extremely grindy and overcomplicated progression system that takes forever to get through, ding 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 ding, an almost non-existent story that has been randomly slapped together in the last moment just to be better than nothing, ding 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 ding, and best of all, a very small portion of the game is playable at release, leaving the rest to be released later as paid DLC. You get the point. Sure, there's some alterations here and there, but overall it's the same formula every time, and it's a dying formula, one that has been prostituted around for far too long. Every developer is being forced into making a live service game, and every one of them is dying faster than the other. It's like hair metal back in the 80s. It's overdone to the point that people are getting sick of it. Most gamers were tired of live service games back in 2019, so what's left for these days? Maybe they were able to make it work back in 2013 and 14, but these days, unless your game is absolutely amazing and simply unmissable, you won't be able to get away with that type of stuff. Payday 3, in its current state, gives no reason to continue playing. If you are a standard edition player, you know you won't be given anything at all. And on top of that, the lack of simple features, like being able to communicate with online players, or buy certain favors for heists, means that the game lacks any replayability. Simple features from Payday 2 are not found here, and it's insane how they were missed out on, as they practically couldn't be more obvious. The game lacks soul, it lacks heart, everything about it just feels unfinished and raw. It feels like a game that was created entirely to milk as much money as possible, and the sad truth of the matter is, that's exactly the case. Starbreeze's exceptionally slow response on fixing the issues that are killing the gameplay experience, along with the company's lack of understanding that if you want players to stick around, you have to give them something. You can't make both all the cosmetics and the heists paid DLC. No one is gonna stick around for that. Just look over at the Avengers or Suicide Squad if you wanna see how that business model is working out for them. And Suicide Squad will at least give players free playable DLC. Starbreeze won't even give you a free mask. They'll charge you up the ass for anything and everything the game has to offer. It feels insulting to the players. It feels like we are paying a full price for a game that will be finished years from now, and we won't be awarded for anything for sticking around. 
And the sad truth of it all is, even if Starbreeze weren't as greedy as they are, and they were to at least make the cosmetics free, it's hard to know if the payday formula is simply able to work in 2024, and it's very possible that that will lead to the end of Starbreeze Studios and payday as a whole. With payday 3 flopping, they've officially killed their one and only form of income, their biggest franchise, like GTA for Rockstar or Hitman for IO. This is their main attraction, and you can ask Volition what happens when you kill that main attraction. Truth is, payday is really dying, a long side effect of Star Breeze's brainless spending back in 2015. While payday 2 was lightning in a bottle that players got hooked on, Payday 3 is anything but. The developer's unwillingness to learn from previous mistakes, along with the extreme desire to charge more money for all future content, leaves Payday 3 as a game that is simply undesirable in modern times. With their cash cows at the end of their rope, it's only a matter of time before the company itself implodes. And though it may seem sad, they've done this to themselves, focusing all of their effort on trying to milk their player base rather than giving them an experience they're willing to come back to. Will Payday 3 survive as a game in time? Probably. We would find the same success Payday 2 did? Highly unlikely. Only time will tell if there is a road to recovery for the Payday franchise. But if history is to be remembered, I wouldn't hold my breath. And with that, this has been Wild Gold. Thank you very much for watching. Well, that was faster than I thought. If you're wondering why I'm dressed like a Power Ranger, I just came back from a ride. And it appears Starbreeze have posted news on an update called Medic Back, funny enough, about what the future of Payday holds. Their claim to fame is bringing back offline mode in a small capacity, reversing the progression system to go back towards highest completion and slightly lowering DLC prices. That's it? That's how you're gonna save this game. First of all, these are the people who needed 3 months for their day 1 patch. This is probably gonna take them 6 to 8 months for basic features that the game should have had at launch. And guess what? These are regular Payday 2 basics and they're being waved around as if they're the greatest update in video game history. All they will do is make Payday 3 playable again. That's it, really. Still, over 95% of all future heists and cosmetics are gonna be paid to DLC. That needs to be bought separately, not to mention the in-game store coming in 2025, if they have an audience by then. These updates just make the game not suck anymore, but they're not lifesavers. They don't guarantee success. This game has left so much bad taste in people's mouths, and the best thing you can do is give them basic features from Payday 2 back, and one singular free heist over the entirety of 2024. I mean, I know the loyalists are probably jumping around with excitement, but there's nothing here to make anyone who isn't already playing the game want to jump in or give it a shot of any kind. For me personally, this is too little too late and it's probably months from releasing as we speak. I just don't see it with Payday 3. There's nothing here to get you excited or to get you hyped. The passion is gone. You can just look at some of the old Payday 2 trailers in comparison to the new Payday 3 ones to see that there's no drive here. I hate to say it, but this formula is dead. I really don't believe these basic features are enough to bring it back. Only time will tell of course, but man, this game is not one I'd want to make my channel about, that's for sure. Until next time, once again this has been Wild Gold. Thank you very much for watching.